Welcome participants. Now we are going to move in week 3 and today is the first lecture of week 3. The topic for this particular lecture is single bed weft knitting and especially in single bed, bed weft knitting we are going to discuss more about fabric curling. So, if you see last week we covered lot of technologies related to single bed weft knitting. Now we are going to analyze the behavior of fabric that we produced on single bed weft knitting machine. Before we move, uh, let us have a quick recap of what we have covered in last week, week number 2. We covered uh, the functioning of uh, needles, we introduced you the needle, needle is the heart of uh, knitting, it actually helps in loop formation. The needle does some kind of reciprocative movements to do the knitting process. Uh, we have already covered this in details. For the needle to do this kind of knitting function, it has to interact with some kind of cam track. The butt of the needle actually follows the track of the cam because of that it does some kind of reciprocative movement on the bed and due to which it can clear the old loop, it can catch the yarn, it can bend the yarn and finally knock the old loop from the needle. So, this is the basic principle of uh, knitting formation by needle. Uh, we also have checked uh, the functioning of other two types of needle which was the beard needle and the compound needle. Although these two are not that much popular in weft knitting, so we uh, restrict our discussion with the latch needle only. Uh, during this process of interaction of butt with the cam, the cam has to be specifically designed in such a way that it creates some kind of track. And to create this track, uh, the cam has to be arranged by using raising cam, clearing cam, stitching cam and up throw cam. So, that each of these cam interacts with the bird in a specifically time, so that they can do the knitting function. We have already discussed this in week number 2. Also, uh, we covered some of the technological machines related to single bed web knitting. We covered two types of machines, one is flat bed weft knitting where needles are placed on a flat bed in the tricks and the other one was circular bed where the needles was placed on the trick created on a cylindrical platform. Uh, machine gauge is also one of the important parameter which decides how closely the needles are placed on the bed. So, number of needles per inch is defined as the machine gauge which can be denoted as E4 or E50, For E4 means 4 needles per inch, E50 means 50 needles per inch. So, naturally when you have more number of needles per unit length, the fabric that will be produced on the machine will be very, very finer. So, machine gauge uh, determines important fabric density. Apart from uh, needle, we also introduced you the sinker element which is primarily most important part in case of circular knitting. Uh, we have seen how sinker and needle interact together on the machine during uh, knitting zone and they sinker actively participates in loop formation. So, it is not only the needle, but you sometimes you need additional element depending on what type of technologies you are using for making fabric. Sinker is mostly uh, useful in knocking the fabric, holding the fabric, creating loop while the needle descends. Uh, downward. So, there are a lot of functions uh, which sinker provides when it is there on the machine. Apart from that, uh, we have also given you the demo of how the cam track is created on flat bed web knitting. There are a lot of different cams uh, starting from a raising cam, then clearing cam, stitching cam, up throw cam and then there are some guard cam. In circular bed, we given more emphasis on multi feeder machines because uh, of very higher productivity because here lot of cams was placed on the periphery of cylindrical wall. So, the needle is always in some kind of knitting function. So, all the needles uh, are making multiple loops in one rotation. So, this is why the production on circular bed is very, very higher. So, now uh, let us move to this particular lecture series of week 3. In this uh, lecture, first of all, uh, we are going to introduce you the, the fabric features that we produced on single bed knitting. What is its problem and what is its benefit? The first thing we are going to do is like uh, to understand what type of loops 
does the machine create, whether it's the technical front or back loops when you are making the fabric on the machine. Uh, apart from that, we are going to introduce you two uh, important terms related to knitting. One is single jersey fabric and double jersey fabrics. First of all, uh, we will give you the idea of what is the problem with single jersey fabrics and why we call this as single jersey fabric. Curling is one of the big problem of single jersey fabrics, which ultimately leads to the development of double jersey fabrics. And to create double jersey fabrics, we need double bed or two sets of needles on two different beds. If you understand why there is a problem of using single jersey fabrics, then you come to know about why there was a development of two beds to create double jersey fabric. So all of these uh, small topics we are going to cover in this particular lecture, but we will focus more on the curling behavior of the fabric, which is related to single jersey fabric. Let us uh, move to the first part, uh, the single bed knitting. So whatever uh, bed we have learned in week 2, whether it is a flat bed or circular bed, we first need to understand whether these machines are making technical front or back loops. Just have a quick recap from week 1, uh, I have already introduced you two technical terms, which is technical back and technical front. So technical back uh, is uh, the loop which is created on the back side of the old loop. So if you see the blue one, it is created on the back side of the old loop which is the red one. So the yarn is pulled from the front side to the back side. So that is why it is technical back. In case of technical front loops, uh, you can see the blue one is uh, pulled uh, towards the front side of red loop. So these are the fabric features. Uh, so if you see the technical back side loops on the surface, you can only able to see the head and sinker part. And in case of technical front side of the fabric, you can only see the legs part of the loop. And technical back we can denote by just having circle in a box and technical front we can uh, define as cross in a box. So these two types of loops are always there on the fabric. It depends on how we are looking on the fabric surface. So let us see um, how these loops are created while we are standing in front of the machine. So if you see the flatbed machine, I have already shown you how the needles do the reciprocative movements on the bed. So when you run the cam jacket on the bed, the needles hit with the cam track and they do some kind of reciprocative movements. The key uh, takeaway from this point is the nature of movement of all needle on this particular bed are same. So the amount of reciprocative movement and the direction of reciprocative movement for all the needles is same. First it comes out, then goes inside the bed. So all needles on a single bed have similar type of movements. So naturally if they have, they all have similar type of movement. So they can either pull the loop to one side or maybe they can pull the loop to the front side or back side depending on, on which position we are standing. So on a single bed, we can only produce similar types of loop in one cycle. If you see the running condition of this machine, so here uh, you can see we are running the cam jacket from left to right and right to left. So naturally the needles is coming towards you, catching the yarn and it is going on the back side. So if you carefully observe the movement of needle, if you stand in front of me in machine, let us suppose if you stand here, the needle is coming towards you, it is catching yarn from the feeder and then it is going back towards the bed. So naturally if you try to analyze, it is catching the yarn on the other side of the fabric and after catching, it is pulling that new yarn towards the back side. So, this surface which you are looking at, it is actually technical back side of the fabrics. So depending on how you stand, you can easily see whether you, the machine is creating technical front or back side when you are standing in front of machine. For this particular machine, it is technical back side which is visible when you are standing here uh, and uh, running the cam jacket you are actually watching the technical backside. So this is the technical 
back side of the fabric and the reason being because needle is coming towards you to catch the yarn and then after catching the yarn it is taking that yarn and making the loop on the back side of the fabric. So that is why this surface is technical back side. So if you uh, see this fabric on the machine this is actually the loops which is being generated. If you take the snapshot the loops will look like this. Okay? And I have also uh, given you the symbol how you can represent this fabric. There are three courses let us suppose you have created and there are four columns. So you can simply represent this fabric by circle in the boxes. So each circle in one box represent one loop. So, so if you see this course, so one, two, three, four, there are four loops and all are technical back loops. So that is why in all four columns you have given four circles to represent four technical back loops. Similarly, if you see the second course, this is the second course. So here again the nature of loop is on the back side. So one, two, three and four. So four loops on the back side. This is how you denote the fabrics. But if you flip this fabric on the other side, if you flip this fabrics, meaning if you take the fabric and reverse it on the other surface, you will be actually looking the technical front side. So if you just reverse the fabric uh, which is not visible here, if you rotate this fabric by 180 degree, uh, you will be able to see the other surface which is on the back side. So on the back side actually all technical front loops are present and we can denote these front loops by cross symbol. So if you see this particular machine, it creates a kind of fabric in which there is either technical back on one surface or technical front on the opposite surface. So this is the only type of fabrics which a single bed machine can produce. So thus this name single jersey fabrics comes in the picture. So jersey usually indicates the knit fabrics, jersey is another uh, synonyms for knit fabrics so, and single jersey means uh, the jersey which is created on single bed. So a weft knit fabric that is produced on a single bed machine is called single jersey. The feature of uh, the single jersey fabric is you can either see technical back side um, back loops on one side and if you flip that fabric and look at other surface you will be able to see technical front side. So this fabrics has either technical front or back on the surface. They do not have the combination of technical back and front on the same side. Either they have technical back completely on one side or technical front completely on one side. So single bed machines, if you see the nature of this machine, the way the needles are placed, they can only pull the yarn on the back side. So naturally all single bed machines can create only similar types of loops. So they can only create single jersey fabrics. Uh, if you see circular knitting also, all the nature of movement of needles are same. They are pulling the yarn going downward. So again they produce similar types of loop on fabric surface. So here you can see all the needles are going up catching the yarn from the feeder which is rotating and then taking that yarn on the bottom side which is not visible here. So whatever surface you are looking, this is actually technical back side. So the nature of needle that is placed on single bed, whether it is flat or circular, the nature of movements of all needle remain same. So that is why they produce similar types of fabrics or single jersey fabrics. Now we come to next section of this lecture which is curling in single jersey fabrics. Curling is one of the basic features uh, which you can observe by looking to single jersey fabrics. So whenever you see any single jersey fabrics and if it has open ends, so if you let suppose if you have a rectangular section of the fabric, uh, if it has free ends, free edges, then you will always observe that the fabric is curling from the edges. And in this particular section, we are going to understand why this particular fabric is doing the curling. This is one of the basic features due to which knitting fabric is entirely different from a woven one. 
when you make a woven fabric, when you cut the fabric, the fabric remain stable on the platform. But when you work with a knitted fabric and especially with the single jersey fabric, the moment you will cut it from any sides, from the edges it will try to curl, it will try to bend which you can see here. It will never remain stationary like a flat surface. So that is the curling features which most of the single jersey fabrics you can observe. And the beauty of this curling is it has different nature along different surfaces. For example, if you have a free ends and if you see along veil line, if you see this particular free edge and this particular free edge, the nature of curling will be completely different. So the fabric will try to curl from technical front to back side. So from this photo also you will be able to observe if you see the photo. So this is the technical back side of the fabric but the curling directions you can see from this edge which is the free ends the fabric is bending from technical front to back side. So all the loops which is present on the left side of the fabric they are actually bending towards back side. Okay? But if you will observe along course direction which is not visible here I am going to show you the fabric in a while but on the course direction all these top loops is actually trying to bend towards front side. So along the edges if you see the fabric on one side it is bending towards back but on the perpendicular side it has opposite nature it is bending towards front side. This is one of the important feature in curling because of this it is very difficult to work with these type of fabrics in, in cutting and sewing. Let us try to first understand why this curling is happening. Before moving to that let us see the nature of this fabric and, and try to observe the direction of these motions. Along the veil line the bending from front to back and along the course line bending from back to front. Uh, let us see the fabric itself. So I am showing you the fabric you can see the fabric in relaxed condition it is bent automatically which is very strange. If you see any other fabrics like woven fabric or many types of knitted fabrics you will not observe this phenomena but in case of single jersey fabric this type of behavior is always observed. So the fabric will never remain in an open state it is always in the curl state. Now try to see the direction in which it is curling. So let me first zoom it so that you can able to see which one is technical front side and which one is technical back side. So you can see this is the technical back side okay? and the technical back side because you can observe the head and sinker part so that is why this is technical back side okay? and if you see the free edges this is the free edges, I am holding it right now so that it can remain open state. I am holding this edge and the moment I am releasing this particular edge it is automatically bending towards the technical back side. So the, this side is technical front side and this one is technical back side. So along this side it is the nature of bending is from technical front to technical back. So along this side the loops which is there on the left side of uh, the fabric they all try to bend from technical front side which is at the bottom side which is not visible from the bottom side to the top side and top side is your technical back. Okay? So the nature of bending is from technical front to back side. If you see the opposite side this is again the nature is bending from technical front side which is at the bottom side from the bottom side to the top side. Okay? So the nature is from so technical front side to back side. Okay? So this is how it is bending. So now let us try to observe the perpendicular sides. So perpendicular sides means this one along course direction. So 
along course direction, this is the course direction and if you try to open this fabric and try to observe this particular side, the nature is automatically in the opposite direction. So, you can see in the relaxed state, the loops, so in the relaxed state, if you see here, the nature of bending of this particular side is from technical back to front side because this is the technical front side and this is the technical back side which is at the bottom. So, this side has opposite tendency compared to the perpendicular side. So, this side and this side they have opposite nature of curling. Okay? And if you go at the bottom side also, again if you relax the fabric, again the bend, nature of bending is from technical back to front side. Okay? This is the front side and this is the technical back side. So, the nature of loop is bending from technical back to front side. So, this is how this fabric behaves and you can see whenever I have to cut the fabric how difficult it is because the fabric is not stable. The moment I am releasing this fabric it is always in some kind of bend form. So, making any clear cutting or sieving is extremely difficult uh, due to presence of curling. Now, we are going to understand why this curling is happening and why this curling is different in two different sides. Okay? Along the veil side it is different, the nature is different and along the core side also the nature is different. So, let us understand why it is happening and why we need to create different types of knitted fabric. Okay? So, now let us see. So, just now we discussed along the veil line it is bending from front to back side and along the course line it is bending from back to front side. Now, let us see why it is happening. To understand this, uh, you need to first understand uh, like whenever we create any loop by the yarn, it is either coming out from the old loop or either it is going inside the old loop. So, in this process you can clearly see the yarn which is there inside the loop, it is not standing or sitting in a same plane, it is coming on the top of the plane also. So, the yarn part of a particular loops are always in the bend position. Okay? They are available in all 3D planes, it is not just 2D plane where the yarn is just lying, it is also going in the third plane. Okay? So, if you see any yarn, any textile yarn, it always is, it is in natural state, it is always in straight conditions. But when you make this yarn to bend into some unstable position, naturally the yarn will try to relax. Okay? So, at present whenever we are creating loops, the yarn in the loop is in a bend state, which is not its natural states because in natural condition yarn, all yarns are in a straight configuration. But inside this particular fabric, we are forcing this yarn to bend in a certain fashion to create a loop. So, and this bending state is highly unstable state. And once any object is in highly unstable state, naturally it will automatically try to move into a stable state because this kind of configuration is not supported by the law of physics itself. So, naturally the yarn which is not supposed to stand in a bend state it has always the tendency to go back to its original state and what is the original state which is the straight configuration. You can also understand by simple example, let us suppose if we take any rod from one side if you bend it, if you from one side if you bend it and if the rod is elastic, the moment you release the force it will always try to go back to its original straight configuration. It will allow you bending, but you have to hold it so that the yarn can be in the bend form. But the moment you release it, this force from other side, it will always try to 
go back to its original state. So, the nature of this yarn is always to recover from the bending state. So, in the loop also in each plane the nature of yarn are in different bending states. Sometimes uh, it is bending in a concave order or sometimes it is bending in a convex order. So, we need to first for example, if you see here the this part of yarn is bending in some other fashion and the, the head part of the yarn is bending in some other fashion. So, if we understand how these bendings in a different plane is happened, we can able to observe what is its behavior during its rotation. To observe this, we need to first look at the projection of the bending of these yarns of this different segments of this particular loops into three different planes so that we will be able to see in which plane how the yarn is actually bent. This is the actual loop and you can see the yarn is bent in different configuration. Okay. Let us try to see the bending in different segment of this particular loop. So, you can see this is the particular loop. Let us define some of the segments of this loop. Uh, we have already defined uh, leg, head, needle part, sinker part and loop part. Uh, Let us try to differentiate each of these segments. So, we start from this sense which is the A point and from A to B, B to C, D, E, F, G and H. Okay. So, we are actually covering the entire loop and now we are going to make a different loops here altogether. So, each of these segments we can define it, we already know this uh, definitions. So, from A to B part, if you see this is the foot part of the loop A to B and from B to C, if you see B to C, this is act nothing but the leg part of the loop. After that from C, D, E, you can say this is the head part of the loop. Okay? And uh, again E to F is the leg part, E to F is leg part. So, there are two legs, one head and two foot in a entire loop. We have also defined needle loop and sinker loop. So, needle loop is nothing but we start from the leg section, cover the head section and then we cover the second leg section. So, from B, C, D, E and F, these are needle section. And this particular section is F G H, this is nothing but the sinker loop. Okay. We have already defined these terms in first week also and also we have introduced this uh, during sinker movement. And if you try to see the entire loop length, we start from A and we end at G. Okay. So, A, B, C, D, E. So, we start from A and we straight away go to G. So, in the entire length, this yarn is in different state. So, from A to B it is rising in some other way, from B to C it is doing another kind of uh, bending nature, from C to E it is again having different kind of bending nature. So, to understand this let us project these yarns into three different planes. If you know coordinate geometry we can have three planes. So, here uh, I am showing you three axis, one is the x axis, you can see here this is the x axis. This is the z axis which is on the top side of the fabric and this is the y axis. So, the fabric is actually lying on a x y plane, but yarn is actually moving in z direction as well. So, let us try to project each of these segments of a loop in each of these planes. So, we start from the most easiest one which is the x y plane on which the fabric is placed, the horizontal surface on which the fabric is placed. So, x y plane. So, in x y plane if you see from the top the projection of each yarn will look like this. So, the, the yarn will actually looks like a perfect loop and this is what we have already introduced you. So, if you look from the top and the fabric is placed on the surface, if you try to project each yarn will make a perfect loop. Okay. So, from A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So, you can easily denote. So, A to B, B to C. C, D, E, F, G, H. So, F, G, H is the sinker part, C, D, E is the head part. So, C, D, E is the head part, 
FGH is the sinker part. So this is the most simple one and in knitting you might have seen this type of diagram everywhere in research paper as well as in books. But uh, let us try to project in two different other planes, the, the X, XZ plane and XY plane. So first look at this YZ plane. So now we try to see the projection in YZ plane. So in YZ plane, if you see the movement of this segment of yarn A to B, it is actually rising because you can see the movement of yarn has to go up because the yarn is pulled from the back side of the fabric to the front side because we are making technical front loop. So naturally from A to B, we are going upward, A is the point where Z is 0 and we are going upward, so A to B. After A, we are moving to C part. So if you carefully see the point C, when we are going to create a new loop after this one, the C part has to be bent by the next new loops. So naturally from B to C part, you can see from here, so B is here and C is somewhere here. So from B to C, you can see this yarn is still going up and then going down. So it is going up in Z direction and then going down, okay. So this is the projected part of the leg segment. So the leg segment is not straight, not in the same plane itself, but rather it is going and then going down. So you can see from this figure also, it is uh, from this point which is somewhere bottom and then it is rising and then it start going descend because the head part is going down of this particular loop. So from B to C, after C you can see the D is further at the bottom most position. So D is somewhere here at this point which is at lower height than C point. So naturally we are going from C to D. So this is what is the projection of this segment. So from A to D on this particular plane. Okay. Now if you start from D to E, if you carefully see A to D, these are exactly mirror image of D, E, F, G. So the projection of D, E, F, G on this plane will remain same because they are just identical. Only the X coordinate is changing but D, E, F, G, the X and Y coordinate will remain same according to A, B, C, D. So we can simply project the D, E, F, G segments on the same plane. It will actually look like exactly same, so D, E, F, G. So this is the projection on Z, Y plane, okay. Now see the projection in the last plane which is Z, X plane. This is the most complicated one. In Z, X plane, if you try to see the segments from A to B, Naturally X is changing, you can see here A to B, X coordinate is changing. Also from A to B, Z coordinate is changing. So this is how it will look. So from A to B, X coordinate is changing and Z coordinate is also changing. After that, it is going from B point to C point. So if you see B to C, so C is on the left side of X. So if you see, um, C is actually on the left side of the B, so the C has to be somewhere here. But we have also seen here from B to C, the Z is increasing and then it is decreasing as well. So it will look like this, somewhere it is, first the Z is increasing and then Z is decreasing and then we reach C point, okay. So this is the leg part, the projection of the leg part on ZX plane. Once we reach C, we are going to D point. So in C is naturally at the higher most position and then we are going to D which is the bottom most position. So in here from C to D both, uh, if you see here C to D, X is increasing, X coordinate is increasing because we are going towards right as well as the Z is decreasing. So from C to D, Z is decreasing and X is increasing. So this is the 
projection of A, B and C, D. Okay? A, B and C, D. These segments is identical to D, E, F, G. You can repeat this entire projection uh, somewhere here. So, from D to E again it will be rising because uh, E is at higher most position and Z is increasing and X is increasing, both is increasing. F is on the left side of E, from E to F, uh, from E to F first Z is increasing and then it is decreasing. So, from E to F Z is increasing and then decreasing and it is on the left side of E. So, and after that from F to G again this part which is the mirror image of A to B. Okay? A to B and F to G are similar. This is how we completed the entire loop. From G to H if you further go ahead it will look like this. So, this is how the projection of loop is done in three different planes. So, the most simple one to understand is this one and the most difficult is this one. But the beauty of this projection is now you can see how the yarn is actually bent inside the fabric. It is not that simple only the, the yarn is bent in the form of perfect loop, but also it is bent in jet direction and due to which it has different nature of recovery and this is why the fabric curling is different in different sides. So, let us see why the nature of veil curling and coarse curling is different from the edges. So, this is the fabric where you have three planes and the fabric is placed in x y plane which is the plane of the PPT you can say and z is outside this screen. Uh, we have already seen the projection in x y plane which is perfect it is the most simple one. So, if you see the loops here it will look like this you can keep continuing depending on how many loops are there and let us try to see the projection of coarse line. So, coarse lines means we start to see the projection of each of these loops. So, first loop, second loop, third loop. So, all the projections we try to see in z y plane. So, in z y plane, in z y plane each of these leg segments starting from the feet part and then going towards at this point the projection will look like same. We have already seen this here you can see here the projection actually are exactly like this. So, in z y plane the projection of a b c d is like this. This is what I am showing you here. So, this is basically the projection of a b c d one feet and one leg. Okay? So, one feet one leg this leg and this feet they also have the mirror image. So, the projection will uh, be identical to this. Again if you see this particular fit and leg the projection will again be the same. So, projection of all loops all top loops on z y plane it remains same. Okay? So, projection of all loops 1, 2, 3 they are actually having same projection on y z plane. Now, let us see where we are holding this fabric. So, basically for if you see each of these loops we are holding somewhere here. So, at this point the old loop is holding its feet and leg part. Okay? So, if you see this loop we are holding here and, and this loop we are holding here. So, we are holding each of these legs at this intersection points 1, 2, 3, 4. So, all loops are actually hold at each of these points. So, if you hold at these points and the other point which is here is free. So, this point is free. Just I mentioned in couple of slides before if you bend the yarn and if you hold from one side and if other side is free it will try to recover its straight section. So, once it will try to recover its straight section. So, what is the nature of bending then? So, the nature of bending will be naturally anti clockwise. Okay? So, all these loops 
will try to bend in anti clockwise directions because the ends are free. So, here we are not holding it. So, all these leg segments, especially the green part, these green parts, all these leg segments will try to bend anti clockwise. So, if all these leg segments try to bend anti clockwise, it means it will try to come towards you, come towards the viewer. So, this is the front side. So, naturally bending is towards the back to front. So, it is coming towards the front sides because the ends are free. So, this is why on the top edge along the course line, the nature of bending is from back to front because legs are dominating the bending. Now, let us see the nature of bending in along veil line. So, veil line, this is the veil line. So, what is happening here? So, we have already seen the nature of bending is from technical back to front side. Let us see the projection first and then we will uh, observe what is exactly happening here. So, this is the front side of the fabric. So, the projection is like this. We have already seen this projection. Okay. So, if you hold the fabric, so for each of these loops, if you see each of these loops 1, 2, 3, along this line, along this veil line, if you see 1, 2, 3 loops and try to see the projection on ZX plane, they all will have identical projection and we have already seen this projection features in couple of slides before. So, this will be the nature of projection in ZX plane of each of these loops. If you see here each of these loops, especially at this point on the right side of loop, we are holding it because we have the fabric on the right side, but on the left side we do not have any fabrics. So, on the right side where there is a leg and the feet part here, especially at this location, leg and the feet part, we are holding the fabric because the loops are holding it, but on the other side since there is no extra column on the left side because this is the free ends. So, this part is free, okay? this part is free to perform its action. So, naturally if you see the, the yarn is bent in this way. So, once the yarn is bent in this fashion, what will be the nature of curling? The curling will be it will try to open up, it will try to uh, become straight it will again become anti clockwise direction and if it will go anti clockwise direction so naturally it will go inside towards the back side of the fabric so the nature of curling will be from front to back side so this is how the curling in a single jersey fabric is different along the veil line and course line. Now comes to the problem because of this fabric curling and because of this unstable behavior of this single jersey, fabric ends become highly unstable and we always have the problem of cutting and sewing. So, this is why we need to look for some other alternatives through which we can minimize these kind of problems. If you see any sweaters, and if you try to observe the fabric at the ends, especially at the collar, at the end segments, at the end of um, hand segments, the nature of these fabrics is not single jersey, it is something different. And the main reason is because we have to make sure the fabric at the ends remain stable, otherwise it will curl and it will not look good aesthetically on the wearer. So, single jersey is one of the biggest problem, uh, this is why we need to look for other fabric structure or we need to look for other fabric technologies, especially in knitting, so that we can minimize the problem of curling. Now, let us see how to avoid curling. To avoid curling, we have another category of fabric in knitting which is called double jersey fabrics. So, a double jersey fabric is nothing but a fabric which is formed by two sets of needles. So, if you see single jersey fabric, it is produced by one set of needle 
and all needles are placed on one bed. But now we are moving to double jersey fabrics and in double jersey fabrics we have two sets of needles and so since it has two sets of needles, so that is why it, it requires two bed. The beauty of this type of fabric is it does not curl from any sides and both sides has both front and back loop. So let us see this particular schematic of this fabric and try to see how the loops look like. So it has four courses, so one is the pink one, the bottom one and then blue one, then green one and then red one. I have already uh, demonstrated this, so for the first one if you see it is going on the back side. So all are back loops, so on the first course. If you observe the yarn, they all are going on the back side, so these are technical back loops. Now if you see the movement of the purple one, they are all are coming on the front side. Okay. Now um, when you see the green one, they all are uh, going on the back side and then again red one coming front side. So on the fabric surface, in each course or in multiple courses, you can find both technical front as well as technical back loops. Okay. So both side has front and back loops and this is the fundamental difference of double jersey fabrics with respect to single jersey fabrics. So if you see the notation of single jersey fabrics, either is, it is totally cross across all the columns, all the boxes or it is totally zero. But in a double jersey fabric, you will must see both technically front and back loops on the same side and this is how fundamentally it is different. So if you have technical front and back loops on the same side of the fabric, it cannot be naturally produced by a single bed because in single bed since the movement of all the needles are same, so you can either produce technical front or technical back. You cannot produce like half needles producing uh, technical front and half is producing technical back because the nature is almost same, so it is not possible. So double jersey fabric cannot be formed by single bed knitting. So this is why we need to come with a new type of technologies where some set of needles will be making technical front and some set of needles will be making technical back simultaneously. And this is possible when we are dealing with two beds, two needle beds. So in this entire week, we are going to focus on double needle bed machines. So double bed machines, so single bed uh, which was the uh, prime target in the week two, now in this week we are going to move on the double bed. So we have two beds and two sets of needles on each side and they will be doing opposite actions. So on one set if they are producing technical back then other set will be making technical front. So this is how it works. So a fabric which is produced on double bed is called double jersey fabrics. Now let us look at the some key uh, features of double jersey fabrics. So first of all, double jersey fabric does not curl. So first let us see this fabric and then uh, we will let you know how, why this is not curling. Okay. So now let us see, I am presenting you a double jersey fabric. This is your double jersey fabric and this is your single jersey fabric. So you can see how from the edges it is more stable compared to single jersey fabrics. So this is the fundamental difference. If you carefully see this double jersey fabric and if you compare it with uh, single jersey, so on the surface if you try to see, you can only see the technical front side because only the legs are visible. So you can see here similar nature of this fabric, so this is the single bed machine fabric and this is the double bed machine fabric. So nature is same, so uh, technical front but you cannot able to observe any technical back. If you flip this and try to observe again, it will again look like a technical front side. So there is no technical back loops uh, you can see here but what exactly is happening is that when you stretch little bit, you can see there is another loops which is created inside. 
So, if you see these two columns, they are actually not connected. So, virtually there is extra column which is in, in between these two columns and this is uh, happening on the other side also. So, if you try to see what is inside, you can easily find the head part. You can see here. So, this is the curve section. Okay. So, if you, if you open it, you can easily see the head and sinker part. So, between two columns, which is technical front, there is technical back hidden on the back side. Okay. So, although on the surface it does not look like this, but in reality the technical back and technical front is present on each side of the surface, but in visibility con, uh, state only technical front is visible, technical back, back is actually hidden between two technical front. Okay. How this having technical front? and technical back on the same side, you can actually minimize the curling. So, here I am showing you one of uh, simple fabric, double jersey fabric. So, here this loop is technical front loops and the next loop is technical back loop. So, let us first see the projection of these two loops. So, this is the first loop in Z y plane, in Z y plane the projection of this leg will be like this, which we have already done this uh, in couple of slides before. And the projection of this loop is like this and the nature of this loop is to bend in anti-clockwise fashion. Now, let us see the loop number 2. If you see the projection of this loop, the yarn is actually bent in opposite direction because it is going inside. So, the yarn is bent in opposite direction and the nature of curling will be naturally this side. So, once you release this fabric, this yarn segment will have anti-clockwise direction of curling and this one having clockwise direction of curling. So, actually they compete with each other and because this is symmetric, so eventually no yarn is able to bend and no loop is able to bend. So, this entire loops along the course remain stable. So, this side remains stable, which you have already seen the actual fabric feature. Now, let us see the um, ZX plane of loop 1. So, it is technical front side. So, this is, this is how we make the ZX uh, projection of technical front loops. Now, after that, if you try to project this second loops, it is going on the back side. So, you can just flip it down and this will be the projection of technical back loop. So, naturally if you try to see the curling behavior of this loop and this loop along y axis, this loop will try to bend anti-clockwise and this will try to bend clockwise. Okay? So, again these two loops, so this column and the entire this column along veil has different nature of bending and due to which it will cancel out the effect. So, due to technical back and front loop on the fabric surface, net resulting torque or net behavior of curling is nullified along course as well as veil direction. This is why double jersey fabric does not curl, gives you more stability. So, fabric does not curl. So, this is the fundamental difference between double jersey and single jersey fabrics. So, if now if you see the sweater design, if you see mostly this collar, uh, neck and especially the end segments of this garment, they all are made from double jersey fabrics to make this structure stable. So, this is the reason why we need to have different types of technologies in knitting, so that we can create single jersey as well as double jersey fabrics. Double jersey fabrics can only be made on double bed, because on a single bed since it has sing similar type of needle movement, so it cannot 
produce double jersey uh, fabrics. That's why we need two beds with two sets of needles performing in opposite directions. So in this way, we can create technical front as well as technical back loops. So this comes, uh, this is why a new set of technological development starts happening in knitting because we are creating more stable fabrics and double bed machines starts coming in the market. Now the reality is most of the knitting machines are made up of double bed, uh, especially V bed machines where uh, two sets of needle beds are there and needles are performing different actions. So in next couple of lectures, especially in this week, we are going to see the technologies related to this type of beds, this type of knitting and we will try to understand the orientation. It's also in circular bed also we have two beds doing the same thing and the reason is to improve stability of the fabrics. So the entire week will be devoted to double bed technologies weft knitting. So now I am going to summarize what we learned in this particular lecture. Uh, naturally we started with single jersey feature, the fabric features. Uh, it actually curls from the edges and we make uh, single jersey fabrics with a single bed machines. And uh, we have also seen the curling nature in detail, how from the top side and especially along the core side, it bends from technical uh, back to front and along the veil side, it is bending from front to back side. So the nature of curling is different. And you can able to analyze this nature of curling by taking the projection of each loops along three planes and then you can able to differentiate the nature of curling. To avoid this curling, we need to produce double jersey fabrics which does not curl from edges. I, sh I have shown you the fabric samples as well. And to make these type of fabrics, we can only make by double bed machines because then only we can have different uh, sets of needles operating different functions. In double bed machines, we have two sets of needles. So in next couple of lectures, we are going to understand uh, technologies related to double bed. So I hope um, the point of uh, the development from single jersey machines to double jersey machines would be clear to you. Let's catch uh, in the next lecture where I'm going to show you most uh, some of the technological machines related to double bed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.